Hey folks, it's Chris Wall. If you're looking to use Amazon's managed Elastic Kubernetes service, or EKS, one of the first steps you're gonna to need to do is create a cluster service role. Now this role is going to trust the EKS service within Amazon to create and manage and deal with the resources needed by the service in your AWS account. We're gonna be doing all of this work in Terraform today using the AWS provider. Let's jump right into the code. Okay, let's drop some code in. I'm gonna start with just the actual resource itself for the role. So let me go ahead and close the console area and we'll take a look. This is very simple Terraform code. It's gonna make an IAM role within Amazon. I'm calling it the EKS cluster role and it has a role policy already embedded into it. Now this is where we're going to trust the EKS service. You can see here that we're allowing the Elastic Kubernetes service and the action we're allowing it is the secure token service, the assume role actions. This this will allow this particular entity, this trusted entity, to assume the role that we're building and get all the permissions that we're going to attach to it. And just kind of out of good hygiene, I like to tag things. So I've got an environmental tag that we'll add later and the source being Terraform. So I know what generated this resource within the cloud. That's it for the role. Next, we need to attach some policy to it. And we don't have to do that ourselves. Amazon's already done it. If I go to the IAM management console to policies, and then you'll see one called Amazon EKS cluster policy. This is a Amazon managed policy. It's there by default, but until you build a role, it doesn't really do anything. So I just wanted to show you that this is a default policy that already exists in the environment. Now we need to grab it and attach it to this role because right now we just have a role that doesn't really do anything. So if we attach this policy to the role, then the entity being EKS will get access to all of those permissions granted by the policy. And you can see here, all we need is the Amazon resource name of the policy. Again, that's the Amazon EKS cluster policy and this new role that we just generated. And I'm referring back to that AWS IAM role resource, specifically the one called EKS cluster role and grab the name. That's pretty much it for the raw Terraform code. Again, grab a role, give it a trusted entity, attach a policy, pretty straightforward stuff. Just scrolling down so we can see some more screen real estate and I'll grab a couple more things. The first additional block we're gonna need is the Terraform block because we need to tell it that we need the Amazon provider. So that's included here. And I've also tacked on the Terraform CLI version that we want. So dot 13 better or equal to that particular version. Next, because we're using the AWS provider, we will need to go ahead and give it information about the region. And so again, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in there. I'm saying for the AWS provider, you're gonna need the information on the region and I'll provide that to you in a variable. That's pretty much it for kind of the Terraform and provider sections. Now, because we have referenced a few variables, I'll need to go add those in there as well. And I'm gonna provide some defaults and some descriptions for those variables. So I'm saying for the first one, it's called AWS underscore region. The description of that is whatever region we wanna target. Now this is IAM policies and roles, so the region doesn't really matter. Everything exists in US East one, but you still have to provide a default and I've just thrown one in there just for fun. The other thing I advise is tagging. So you can see here at the bottom, I have a tag variable that allows me to apply the environment that I'm working within as a tag to any AWS resource, such as production or development or demo or something like that. And this is pretty much it. This is everything that you need to run this code. Let's go through the couple steps required to get this prepared and actually see what it does in the cloud. So I'm gonna open up the console again here. Let's clear what we've got. Let's do the four things that I always like to do. First step, initialize. So Terraform init. Let's initialize this, grab the provider, get everything all set up, allow us to run the code. And again, init is kind of required all the time. So make sure you get in the habit of running it. Then Terraform format. And looks like it cleaned up a little bit in my main.tf file, that's fine. All the uh, code is now properly configured and formatted. And lastly, I'll do a Terraform validate and make sure that we have good code and it looks good. So now we can actually start working with the code. I'm gonna stop using the full word Terraform. I have an alias set up. So if I get alias for TF, it's actually running, running the Terraform.exe for me. So I'm just kind of used to using TF instead. Okay, let's go ahead and get this code into production. I'm gonna skip the plan step and just show you what it's like when you apply straight forward. So we'll just do a TF apply right out the gate. I'll make this bigger and we'll see what's gonna happen here. That's gonna make everything. Everything's a create. If I scroll up here, it says it's gonna create resources, the role and all the information that we provided for the role, as well as attaching the AWS managed policy to the role. Seems pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and just say yes. But whoa, 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 whoa. We gotta wait a minute here. Gotta go back to IAM and make sure this role doesn't exist. There's no voodoo magic here. I'm just clicking to search, refresh. It's not there. So no smoke and mirrors again. Hit yes, 
and it's gonna go create this. And honestly, I am, it doesn't take very long. It's pretty quick, two seconds, it's there. We can switch back, hit refresh. There's the role that we're looking for. And if we dive in a little bit deeper, we can see basically what we just built in Terraform realized in the console. There's the Amazon EKS cluster policy and it's attached. And if you kind of click the drop down here, it's gonna show you all the different things that it has to deal with, such as EC2 for nodes and elastic load balancing to scale out the cluster and things like that. And if we go to trusted relationship, there it is. The EKS service itself is able to assume this role to get access to our account and manage its downstream dependencies and basically just be what it needs to be within our account. Now you're probably thinking, hey Chris, everything's in main.tf, that's not super realistic. And you would be right, that's not really how things work in the real world. So we're gonna take this file, we're gonna split it up into smaller files based on what they have to do. The major benefit here is it's much easier to collaborate with people. You have different files based on what they do and you can iterate on those files and kind of copy them where you need them to be and keep your code somewhat dry, which is don't repeat yourself. So it's really all about cosmetics, collaboration and avoiding merge conflicts, which are never fun. So let's switch back to the code. So I'm happy with the resources being in the main.tf file. That's kind of the point, the main things that it's gonna build. But all this stuff for the Terraform actual configuration, we're gonna split that out. So we're gonna have a new file in here and we're gonna call it provider.tf. And we're gonna grab the information in this block all the way down to the provider information. We're gonna grab it, I'm just cutting it out of this file. I'm gonna paste it into this file. And that's really kind of it. Now I have a provider file that gives me information on the required providers and how to configure the providers. And I can actually go down the rabbit hole a little bit further because required versions should really be in its own file called version. So I'm just gonna grab all of this. We're gonna delete the version code out of there. And we're gonna make a new file called version.tf. I'm gonna drop the block back in there, but I'm gonna get rid of this provider th uh, required providers thing here just so that it looks clean and pretty. And then finally, if we go back to the main file, you can see these variables. We just don't really want those in the main file either. So I'm gonna grab the variables. We're gonna make one more new file called variable, oop, variable.tf, and I'll pop that in there. And Terraform's smart enough, it'll just look at all the configuration files and kind of merge them together because it's a computer, it can do that. But for people, it's nice to say, here's where the code is, this nice small file. If I get rid of this here, you can see, it's just a nice small file, you can work with the resources. And then you kind of can work separately with any information on the provider or any information on the variables or the version that you want Terraform CLI to be. So your last question is probably Chris. You know, I split this file up. Is that going to mess up Terraform? And no, if I do a plan right here, we can see it still goes through just fine. It's still looking through all the configuration because it merges it together and it's unaffected. So do yourself a favor, split things out for housekeeping and collaboration and just to make things kind of easier to manage. Plus then you can pluck these little you know bits of code here and there and reuse them elsewhere. But don't worry about Terraform carrying because it's designed to deal with this. That's it for getting set up with Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS using Terraform and the AWS provider. I hope you enjoyed it and happy Terraforming.